All right, in this video, I wanted to talk to you about one of the most important chemical structures we'll be talking about throughout microbiology, and that structure is peptidoglycan. So uh, bacterial cells utilize peptidoglycan. It's critical to their survival. And so we really want to understand what this chemical structure is made out of, why it's important. So um, let's start looking at peptidoglycan. So the reason we care about peptidoglycan is that the bacterial cell wall is made out of this chemical structure called peptidoglycan. So I have a diagram here. At the bottom, we're trying to demonstrate a simple bacterial cell. The inside of the cell contains the cytosol or cytoplasm. Then as you uh, move out of the cell, you have to cross the lipid bilayer or the cell membrane. And then for bacterial cells, immediately outside the cell membrane is this layer, the cell wall, and that cell wall is made out of peptidoglycan. So in this more detailed view here, we can see the lipids of the lipid bilayer, and then we can see this diagram representing the chemical structure of this stuff that we call peptidoglycan. Again, it's super important in microbiology that we understand the chemical makeup of this chemical peptidoglycan. So let's think a little more deeply about what's going on inside of peptidoglycan. So first, let's think about what peptidoglycan is actually made out of. So what are the chemical components of peptidoglycan? And really, peptidoglycan is made out of just two chemical components. So it's built out of two monosaccharides. Remember, a monosaccharide is just a single sugar. So the chemicals that make up the peptidoglycan cell wall are mostly sugars. We're going to talk about two different sugars that are used to make up this peptidoglycan cell wall. The first of these sugars has this name, N-acetylmuramic acid. But in our class, we're just going to call this sugar NAM, N-A-M. NAM is going to represent N-acetylmuramic acid. So this sugar has a very specific chemical structure, and I want to show you what that looks like. Here's a chemical structure for the sugar NAM. So it has a ring structure, which is common to many sugars. Um, it's a carbohydrate, so it's made out of uh, hydrated carbon, so waters and carbons. Um, I tell you this, but I, I don't want you to worry too much about the intricacies of that structure. Right? We don't need to memorize that NAM chemical structure. I really just want to point out that NAM is a sugar. The second monosaccharide that is part of the peptidoglycan cell wall is called N-acetylglucosamine. Again, we don't need to use that full name in our course. Let's just refer to that sugar as NAG. So we'll use NAG to refer to N-acetylglucosamine. And again, I want us to look at the chemical structure of NAG, not because we should memorize that structure or we're going to need to draw the exact structure moving forward, but so that we can see it shares this same sugar or monosaccharide structure. So here's NAG. Again, it has that ring structure, and it's the hydrated carbons making it a carbohydrate. So those are the chemicals that we're going to need to understand to um, fully understand how peptidoglycan is built. But la let's add one more quick detail about NAM and NAG. So that is that in the peptidoglycan cell wall, NAM is actually modified, and NAM is bound to some amino acids. So I'm showing you another diagram of the two sugars. On the right here is NAG. Again, there's the ring structure of the sugar. And then on the left, here's the NAM ring structure. Again, NAM is slightly modified. So NAG has no modifications. NAM has this addition of some extra chemicals hanging off the sugar. And again, NAM is bound to these amino acids. So NAM is actually connected to a string of amino acids. It starts being bound to five amino acids that we call a pentapeptide. Five pentapeptides. 
peptide refers to the amino acid chain. So a peptide is just a short protein. So NAM in the bacterial cell wall, when it's part of peptidoglycan, actually is connected to these amino acids. Again, these structures are quite complicated, right? I don't need you, or we should not dedicate ourselves to memorizing the intricacies of these structures. We should recognize that NAM and NAG are each sugars, and that this NAM sugar has this addition of some amino acids on the side. So let's think about how we could simplify these chemical structures and then use those simplified chemical structures to understand how peptidoglycan is put together. So moving forward, we're gonna use simplified structures for NAG and NAM. Let's start with NAM. So NAM, again, has this sugar. So I'm gonna use this hexagon ring to um, signify NAM. But again, NAM has these amino acids hanging off the side. So I'm just gonna have this little circle hanging off the bottom with an AA inside to stand for amino acid. Again, this is super simplified compared to those previously complex images we looked at. But this is all we really need to understand to understand peptidoglycan. So NAM has the sugar ring and the amino acids. NAG, remember NAG is nothing more than that sugar ring. So again, I'm using the hexagon. I've put it in a different color to represent that it is a different sugar. And I'll always keep the NAM and NAG initials inside these sugars. So these are the simplified chemical structures that we'll use to try to understand peptidoglycan. So let's start thinking about how peptidoglycan is built. What are, how are these pieces put together? All right, so we'll think about the peptidoglycan structure. It's really um, two main steps in this structure. So the first thing we're gonna think about is that these NAG and NAM sugars are connected together in alternating chains. Alternating just means that if we start with a NAM, the next sugar in the chain is a NAG. Then we alternate back to NAM, and then back to NAG again, and so on and so forth, until we build a long chain of these sugars, alternating. So no two NAMs are ever right next to each other, no two NAGs are ever right next to each other. So we build this alternating chain, and then we have to connect those sugars together so they stay in this orientation. We know that the way you connect sugars together in a carbohydrate is with a glycosidic bond. So glycosidic bonds are used to hold these sugars together. So to build on this structure, our alternating chain, all we have to do is add this glycosidic bond right in between a NAM and a NAG. Now we need to connect the next NAG and NAM together with another glycosidic bond. And we just fill in all of those gaps with glycosidic bonds until we have this permanently connected chain of alternating NAM and NAG sugars. Once we have multiple chains, the next step in the process is that multiple chains of NAG and NAM are connected to one another. So to demonstrate that, let's just make multiple chains. So I'll put one more of these alternating chains of NAM and NAG below the first one, and then I'll add another alternating chain of NAM and NAG above the first one. In an actual bacterial cell wall, there would be thousands and thousands and thousands of these chains, but I'm just gonna show you three. So we're gonna take these chains of NAG and NAM and we're gonna connect those chains to one another. So now we need to figure out, well, how are we gonna connect those chains to one another? So the way we do that is that we use peptide bonds between the NAMs to connect the chains. We know that peptide bonds are the kind of bond that are used to link amino acids together. So since NAM sugars have these amino acid side chains, we can build a peptide bond between one amino acid and the amino acid on another NAM next door. And so I'll put one of those in. So this connection, this orange line, connects the amino acids from one NAM to another NAM in an adjacent chain. And we've just made locked these structures together, making the cell wall much more strong. So anywhere we can, we'll connect a pair of amino acids together using a peptide bond. The one thing I'll point out about these 
peptide bond crosslinks between NAM sugars is that there's only ever one to any one NAM. So you can only make one peptide bond per NAM. So you can only connect two NAMs together with one peptide bond. And that's the peptidoglycan structure. You just make more and more of that. You make the strings of sugars, you connect them together with glycosidic bonds, then you connect the strings to one another using the peptide bonds. And that's it. So let's look at some additional diagrams that represent this structure. Here's another diagram uh, with NAG and NAM. With, they are uh, represented by these different colored circles. So we get these alternating strings of NAM and NAG and NAM and NAG and NAM and NAG and so on. And then we make a whole bunch of those strings. And off of the NAMs, you find these amino acid side chains. And they've been connected together with a peptide bond. And we get this sort of lattice work of peptidoglycan. Let's look at another diagram. Here we've got the cell membrane, and then outside of that we've got another similar diagram where NAMs and NAGs alternate in these different color balls, and then off the NAMs are these peptide or amino acid side chains that are held together by peptide bonds. So same information, just a slightly different image. Here's another one. Again, the NAMs and NAGs are represented by these different colored hexagons to represent that they are sugars. Off the NAMs we get the amino acids, and then the amino acids on two different NAMs are connected together with a peptide bond. Um, here's another uh, structure where again the NAM and NAG are represented by different colored hexagons. Off of the NAMs we get these amino acid side chains, and then the amino acid side chains between two NAMs are connected together by a peptide bond crosslink. I think I have one more picture. Now we are looking more closely at the NAM and NAG sugars represented with ball structures. Again, off of the NAMs, we have these amino acid side chains, and then the NAMs are connected to one another through those peptide bonds. So let's end by just thinking about what's different between peptidoglycan in different kinds of bacteria, specifically gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So we've talked about some of this previously. Um, first, in gram-positive bacteria, this peptidoglycan structure is quite thick. We've talked about it being 10 to, uh, or sorry, 30 to 300 nanometers thick. Whereas in gram-negative cells, that peptidoglycan layer is relatively thin, just a few nanometers thin. So same chemical structure, different amounts of it. Lots in gram-positive, a thinner layer in gram-negative. There are other differences as well associated with this peptidoglycan structure in gram-positives. We'll find these things called tychoic and lipotychoic acids. There's lots of these in the gram-positive peptidoglycan structure. Whereas in the gram-negative peptidoglycan structure, they generally lack these tychoic or lipotychoic acids. Finally, the very last difference that we should think about is the exact way those amino acids on the NAMs are held together. So if you look really closely at the structure in a gram-positive the NAMs have tetrapeptides hanging off of them at the end in the final structure, four amino acids. And then the four amino acid chains on two different NAMs are held together by a pentaglycine bridge. So five glycines are in between these four peptide chains. And that's slightly different than what we see in a gram-negative cell. In gram-negative cell walls, the tetrapeptides on NAMs are directly cross-linked to one another. There's none of this pentaglycine stuff. So this is a really um, specific or detailed difference that I don't want you to get lost in. What's important to recognize is that both peptidoglycan structures use peptide bonds to connect NAMs to one another. So let's stop there. As always, I look forward to answering your questions if you have them on the discussion boards and in class, and I will talk to you later.